Good morning, everybody. Welcome to morning prayer. Just take a few moments to allow some um, allow people to join us. It's just me for morning prayer today, and I do apologise for the uh, headphone affair. It's just what's necessary for the sound. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to hear well and, um, and take part in our worship. I'm trying a few new things today, so let's see if that works. So let's turn then to our liturgy for this one. As we come in. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known in all earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously, and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Psalm for today, Psalm 56. In God I trust and will not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for they trample over me. All day long they assault and oppress me. My adversaries trample all over me all the day long. Many are they that make proud war against me. In the day of my fear I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust and will not fear, for what can flesh do to me? All day long they wound me with words, their every thought is to do me evil. They stir up trouble, they lie in wait, marking my steps they seek my life. Shall they escape for all their wickedness? In anger, O God, cast the peoples down. You have counted up my groaning, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not written in your book? Then shall my enemies turn back on the day when I call upon thee. This I know, for God is on my side. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not fear. What can flesh do to me? To you, O God, will I fulfil my vows. To you will I present my offerings of thanks. For you will deliver my soul from death and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. In God I trust and will not fear. Faithful God, your deliverance is nearer than we know. Free us from fear and help us to find courage in your word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So our first reading this morning is from 1 Kings, chapter 18.
After many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. In the third year of the drought, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab. I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. The famine was severe in Samaria. Ahab summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of the palace. Now Obadiah revered the Lord greatly. When Jezebel was killing off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets, hid them fifty to a cave, and provided them with bread and water. Then Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the land to all the springs of water, and to all the wadis. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive, and not lose some of the animals. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ahab went in one direction by himself, and Obadiah went in another direction by himself. As Obadiah was on the way, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognised him, fell on his face and said, Is it you, my lord Elijah? He answered him, It is I. Go, tell your lord that Elijah is here. And he said, How have I sinned that you would hand your servant over to Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom to which my Lord has not sent to seek you. And when they would say, He is not here, he would require an oath of the kingdom or nation that they had not found you. But now you say, Go tell your Lord that Elijah is here. As soon as I have gone from you, the Spirit of the Lord will carry, will carry you I know not where. So when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he will kill me although I, your servant, have revered the Lord from my youth. Has it not been told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets, fifty to a cave, and provided them with bread and water? Yet now you say, Go tell your Lord that Elijah is here. He'll surely kill me. Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? He answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, and your father's house, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and followed the Baals. Now, therefore, have all Israel assembled for me at Mount Carmel, with the four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal, and the four hundred prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent to all the Israelites, and assembled the prophets, Mount Carmel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today from Acts chapter 20. From Miletus, Paul sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they came to him, he said to them, you yourselves know how I lived among you the entire time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, enjoying the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly and from house to house, as I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus. And now, as a captive to the Spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself, if only I might finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you, among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom, will ever see my face again. Therefore, I declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own Son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, some even from your own group will come, distorting the truth, in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God, and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up 
and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this, I have given you an example, that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said, that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Paul's journey through Asia continues in today's reading from Acts. Now, as Paul is anchored in Miletus, he calls the church leaders from Ephesus to meet him. This is interesting in Acts because it's the only speech recorded in the book where Paul talks to the church leaders and isn't engaged in evangelism. In that way, it's more like the content of Paul's letters, his epistles. He shows vulnerability, whilst issuing encouragement and warning. This speech is one of commissioning. He wouldn't be coming back, and where he was going, he would not be sure he'd ever leave. However, he reminded the Ephesian church leaders of all that he had done whilst he was with them and that the responsibility would now be theirs to continue to build up the faith amongst the believers and to be watchful of those who would distort the truth. But as it says in Matthew 7.14, small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. The church leaders receive the word and weep with Paul as they say their goodbyes and pray for one another. This is a time of ending and beginnings. An ending for Paul, who's moving on to something which may mean his death. A beginning for the Ephesian church, taking on leadership by themselves. There's uncertainty, but there is hope. Paul commends the Ephesian church to God, saying, I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I'm going to read that one again. I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give the inheritance among all who are sanctified. As Paul speaks, he looks back on his life and on his time with the Ephesian church. He reflects on the move of God through difficult times. He reflects on following the call of God with single-minded determination and in spite of what that might mean for his own life. It's emotional as he connects with those who have become his friends and co-workers for the gospel. I wonder what we would have heard from the Ephesian church leaders if they had had the opportunity to speak. How would they reflect on the time Paul spent with them? On the hopes and fears they had for the church they led? Now, I'm going to confess now, I don't think it's always easy to see God at work. I know I have felt guilty at times, but when asked, where is God at work in your life? I just haven't known how to answer. But when I've seen other Christians seeing God at work and speaking out so freely, I have to work at it. It's a spiritual discipline. It takes time and effort to reflect on our days and years and see the hand of God guiding us see the hand of God working in the world around us. So this is how I'd like to spend our morning today. I'd like to spend a few minutes in a time of quiet. I'm going to try and play some music with the technology here in front of me if I can get it to work and play uh, a different video. Thinking back, I wanted to spend some time just thinking back over the last week and looking for the marks of God in, the, in our lives and the lives of those around us. So just bear with me as I try and make this 
So let us come to God and seek him and see where he has been working in our lives this week. with me. So let's thank God for the way he's worked in our lives this week. I'll share with you, my, my littlest this week has started to go to school without fuss every day as there are little light bulbs turned on in his head and he knew everything was going to be all right, which has been such an answer to prayer. In big and small ways, God has shown him that he is safe. So I thank God for that. Let us pray for all those ways that God has been working in our lives as well. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are at work in the background all the time, whether we see it or whether we don't. We pray that you would open our eyes to see you in the world around us. In Jesus' name.
let us turn back to our liturgy in a responsory. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Say the Benedictus. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness, and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. So let us turn to a time of intercession, praying for the day, and the world, and the church. Lord Jesus, we bring before you this day. We thank you for the sun that shines. For the rain that waters the earth. We pray for all those things that we are to do today. Whatever we've got planned and all those things that will crop up that we don't even know yet are going to happen. hold before you the people that we will meet, those that we will talk to. We pray that you would help us to see you at work. Open our eyes to the world around you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we pray for our world. And as the coronavirus seems to take a hold once more, we pray for a move of your Holy Spirit. for those areas where the transmission of the virus is increasing. Praying especially for Burnley where that transmission rate is the highest in the country. And for all the northwest. We pray for our own town here in Blackpool. And we ask that you would keep us safe in our families, in our homes and our community. We pray for world leaders grappling with the unknown. We pray for all those who are leaders in our communities, praying especially for school leaders right now. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we hold before you the church this day. Praying for the church in Lancashire, for the Blackland Diocese, for our bishops, Julian, Philip, and Jen. Pray for our church, St Thomas's, here in Blackland, and for the community we serve. Would you guide us, Lord? Would you show us where to work? Who to win, who to meet. Would you help us to grow deeper in you? To increase our faith. That we might be a church that is a beacon of light in Central Blackpool and beyond. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so we turn to the collect for today. O oh Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who, you, who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's been lovely to join with you in prayer this morning. Pray that your days would be great. And we look forward to seeing you again either via the medium of technology or in person on Sunday morning, which is our harvest service. So look forward to seeing you soon.